I had a stack of walnut that I had cut up and flattened in thickness years ago to make paneling out of, and I changed my mind about the job, so um, it's been laying in the shop, and finally I decided to use it for the back of the cabinet that I'm building for the guest room, so this is just a little um, video about making some tongue and groove out of it. Um, what I did is I picked out the flattest stock that was left. Some of it was really had, just from sitting and stuff, had kind of warped and... Uh, you know twisted and stuff like that so basically I just picked out the uh, best pieces of it to use for this project and as always um, I got to go back and get a, a good straight edge on one side here to start so I can rip it down to the width plus at the same time I'm starting to clean out my shop so I'm in I had this radial arm saw that I bought probably 20 years ago and I used it for about a week and never really liked it and it's just sat so that's going to be going on Craigslist shortly to get that out of there and put the money towards a new router table now. So anyhow I um, I had to go through and once I got one edge straight on them I decided to just stack them up there and see if I could pick a couple different random widths to rip them down to. And so I just took them all and just, you know, set them up by width there and uh, took a couple measurements and decided what I was going to go with. Um, I started ripping a couple of them. You can see with this thin stock, the saw kicks out a lot of sawdust and stuff. So in the end, I decided I'm going to try to build something to catch a little bit of this sawdust because I've got a couple hundred feet to rip here. So I have these little brass uh, inserts I turned years ago for fitting in the miter guide track there and so I had to take a piece of just plywood that I had laying there and um, drill a hole in it for a dust collection hose and add a spacer here to get it up high enough to clear the top of the um, this wood that I'm ripping down and then I'm just going to slide it in the tracks there and uh, set it over the blade and see if it makes a difference and in the end it actually uh, you know, I'll show you in a little while, but it did make a difference, and it really is a great saw guard because you just, there's no way you can get your fingers near the blade with this in place there. So I'm going to, I'm working on some future ideas to make kind of a flip up out of the way permanent install um, in the future. So I got that in place, and just I have another extra dust collection poured up there that I was always going to do something on the top with, so just took that and plugged it into there and that way I'll have um, there it is I got a hose to the top two and a half and then I got the other one to the bottom of the cabinet too and there you can see it really does cover the blade good and gives me access to cut up to one inch thick stock so now I'm gonna you know just try this out and in the end, it, it did do a pretty good job. I uh, I caught all of the, the real fine dust, it looks like, but some of the larger pieces actually could escape. But basically, it um, you know, when you have a lot of stuff to rip down like this, that dust coming out the top, especially when you're dealing with walnut, it's a real nuisance to deal with. And, um, you know, this, this just basic idea does work, so I'll be expanding it in the future. And you can see there that I've got the uh, this big open gap in the edge there that's letting a lot of the the larger dust escape. And I I decided to go back after this and just put a little bit of masking tape to fill that in a little bit there. And there you can see just a couple pieces of tape stuck on the side to help contain the vacuum. Which probably would be a couple brushes or something in the future. And that got you know just about all of it um, one of the problems was when I went from the harder wood to the, the softer white wood on this you can see some of the right there you can see some of the chips come out so I have to do a little bit of work on coming up with a um, like an air pocket up on top there to, to help with that but basically it really did make a, a big difference and uh, did help out the air in my shop it does take a a lot of time to go through and make paneling like this and rip a lot of small pieces as you can see um, if you had a four-sided molder it would be nice you could just just run it right through and you'd be done in no time but that's not the case here 
as you can pretty much see working with rough cut wood that you um, grew in your backyard there it does take a lot of extra preparation work just to get it ready to use for the project so after just playing with this new uh, vacuum hose on the top here and I found also that if I move it down a little bit further in front of the blade there like that you can catch a little more of the sawdust so you know it's an idea to start with and uh, hopefully in the future I can make it work better and you do wind up with a lot of uh, nice kindling strips for the fireplace to um, to use for fire starters so that's a good thing about you know working with the rough cut wood so there are the pieces. I narrowed them down to basically four different um, widths there. And then when I'm done with this, I just cut, loosen it up and just slide it out of the way so I can use the cross-cut gauge. Then um, originally I was going to cut these down to like 3 8 thick paneling, but I decided to leave it a little bit thicker. So I'm um, just going to cut them down to 7 16 So what I'm doing is I'm just going back to take about 30 seconds off the one face of them just to uh, know that I've got a good perfectly flat face to start with and that you know that's another thing that takes a while but um, I did have a problem before with the joiner losing a lot of sawdust and there you can see I got it down pretty good now to catching all the chips and all it took was a piece of cardboard taped in the back there to kind of cover in that gap where they were coming out of and um, in the future I'm going to make a plastic shield to go in there that should really help and hopefully someday I'll get all my sawdust collection worked out um, my grizzly uh, cyclone is on the way now it just shipped today so hopefully I'll be able to get that hooked up and um, see how that works too shortly and now it's over to the planer and I'm like I said, I'm taking these down to 7 16 thick now. Um, the router cutters that I got for this job would go down to 3 8 thick, but I decided to just leave it a little bit thicker um, for this job. So it takes a while to, to feed them all through the planer there. And there they are, all ready to put an edge on. In the meantime, I've still got that top for the chest that I'm... Uh, working on and this time I decided to take the uh, my little portable planer there to, to radius over the edges on the nightstands I tried using spoke shaves and files and everything else and it just took too long so this time I decided to, to just uh, you know take the planer hook it up to the uh, vacuum cleaner so I can catch all the dust coming out of it and just go back and put some you know not perfect radiuses I'm trying to get them uh, kind of a variable radius on the ends that didn't take long to do that this way and then back with the belt sander to do a little bit of further you know smoothing and blending in and I didn't show you the part where the bottom of the duck bag here the zipper blew open on it it was a total mess so I kind of was upset and didn't bother getting the camera out for that one but um so there they are all you know just kind of blended over and then back over to they fit my little sanding table here now and just gonna take a orbital sander and go back and do the final blending to get everything nice and um, you know nice and smooth curves and stuff there so in the background I am still working on this project and um, I, right now it looks like I'm gonna be uh, squeezing in a uh, stand for that new dehydrator before I get to finishing this project up too so now it's just time to put some polyurethane on it and I didn't want to make the mess setting up the sprayer and stuff so I just decided to to brush it on seeing how it's going to have to be all sanded out and rubbed out anyway so this polycrylic does you know does go on good and dry really quick and then here's the uh, bits that I had purchased for making the paneling I got out and you're just a tongue and groove bit from MLCS that can do very thin stock so set it up and started running the first pieces here um, this, this cutting the tongue on this side actually takes a lot of force to feed it because you're taking a pretty big cut on it so it would have really been nice to have a power feeder for this but it did work good and one thing I did find out when trying to set this up um, 
I'm gonna have to get a router table in the future that has a, um, a lift on it because trying to set up bits like this while well, the first one wasn't too bad but and there you can see it's real nice did a real nice job cutting the tongue on a walnut but when you go to set this up you really do need a lift with some fine adjust to um, to make it easy to set up and you do need a little bit better router table I think the um, fence was really tough to get everything in perfect alignment um, I had to do some clamping and forcing to, to get it so that I could uh, feed it smoothly without banging it as I crossed over the bit. But you can see those uh, feather boards really do make a big difference too. They do help hold it down because any movement in the stock at this point in time is going to you know, magnify itself when you go to put the pieces together. So it did take a while to cut them and I got the... Um, you know the first side here I cut all the tongues on all the different widths there that I had broken it down to and then it was time to go back and set up the groove bit um, and like I said that was just kind of took a while to really get it right but you know once you get it right everything comes out perfect and this side actually uh, cutting the groove really fed a lot easier there really wasn't taking much of a cut uh, just basically cutting the groove and the the V off it so it was a lot easier to feed and there you can see they they did come out really nice and they um, do look look good so it's just a matter of just feeding them all which does take some time so if anybody out there does have a, um, a favorite uh, cast iron router top and um, a favorite lift to go with it I'd appreciate hearing about that because I'm trying to consider which way to head with that now um, so there they are a couple of minutes later all well cut they all line up nice and um, do have to I'm gonna have to uh, do a little bit of sanding on them you can see the walnut grain when it changes directions does get a little bit rough but you know it's really not that bad all in all they did come out nice and then I use this shrink wrap stuff I get rolls of it at Home Depot and Whenever I have a bunch of pieces I want to keep together and try to keep them flat and stuff, I'll just wrap them up with this uh, shrink wrap until I get a chance to, you know, use them and assemble them. And I find it does help a lot. It's uh, It does put a nice amount of force on it to keep everything uh, together and keep it good. So there it is all ready to go and um, as I said before I'm gonna delay the rest of this project a little bit to squeeze in a stand for that new de that new dehydrator that I picked up so you can see it's it's fairly easy to, to make tongue and groove out of um, you know the thin stock here with the right cutters and stuff um, basically all it takes is a little bit of time to get everything prepared and it does come out nice in the end Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.